Dr. P here summarizing the ninth cranial nerve. We learned that there are three real origin components of the glossopharyngeal nerve at the level of the medulla oblongata. We've got the nucleus ambiguous, which is just posterior to the mid-coronal plane, close to the midline. We've got the inferior uh, salivary nucleus, and although I haven't divided them up into sensory and motor this time, we've also got a little more lateral to that, the nucleus uh, of the solitary tract. And these three are going to contribute to both sensory and motor components of the glossopharyngeal nerve to create the apparent origin of the glossopharyngeal nerve, which travels very nicely with its companion, the vagus nerve, which I'll draw over in, in red right here. So then these nerves go out to the side, and we're going to come off now our drawing tool, and we're going to go down. And the nerve sits between the carotid artery and the jugular vein, traveling inferiorly, as we discussed before. Now, the branches include tympanic, stylopharyngeal, and tonsillar. There is a nerve to the carotid sinus, branches to the posterior third of the tongue, which par participate in taste, and these are known as lingual branches. There's also a communicating branch to the vagus nerve. It's important when you're taking any board exam that you remember the glossopharyngeal provides taste to the posterior third of the tongue. Taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue comes from the cordotympany nerve, from the facial nerve, traveling with uh, V3, the third division of the trigeminal nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve also contributes in the formation of the pharyngeal plexus along with the vagus nerve and has motor supply to some of the constrictor muscles and mu muscles of the pharynx. Dr. P, out.